I think it's, I'm sure that my reaction is what you would think. Um, I was disappointed. Uh, I was uh, frustrated. You know, I, I was, you know, at the end of the day, a young kid, a 17 year old is dead. And um, while we seek justice and understand and respect the process, um, it leaves a lot to be desired if you're the mother of a, of a young African-American um, boy in our community. And I, I do not believe uh, that um, the, um, the population of Florida, particularly African-American young men, are well served by their shoot first policies. Protesters came up here, they went up into the balcony area at City Hall Do you understand why people in Baltimore are so upset about this? I understand. I mean, it, it, it matters across the country when um, we see someone's life who was taken away, uh, someone who had promise, uh, and it, it's clear that um, there's significant elements of racial profiling involved, and it is it's frustrating. Uh, so I understand why people um, people are upset. I mean, I was upset about the issue of ra racial profiling from back when I was a city council person. I introduced legislation uh, requiring the police department to uh, to keep track uh, when someone is stopped, so they have so some so we could track whether our department was uh, profiling uh, individuals. So I I get it. I understand the the frustration. I also um, understand that and agree with the president who says that we need to honor Trayvon's life by renewing a serious national debate about our obsession with guns and the impact on, of gun violence uh, on uh, and in our communities. Uh, Trayvon Martin died because uh, George, Zimmerman, George Zimmerman had a, uh, a concealed weapon, period. And um, it is senseless. And it's frustrating, and it's more frustrating to me when I hear people like Congressman Andy Harris say that we should get over it. Um, it, it is so unbelievably dismissive, callous, and uh, out of touch uh, that someone would say that. You know, I would dare him to say that to Trayvon Martin's parents to just uh, get over it. But um, you know, that being said. I feel, you know, as, as a mother, e extremely uh, saddened, um, and as a public servant, um, conflicted because I know that while the issue of racial profiling is so prevalent, you know, since the time that Trayvon Martin was killed, so many African American men in Baltimore and all over our country were killed at our own hands. And that is a, a problem that we can't lose sight of. Uh, either, and that's why with the Trayvon Martin case and with the work that I'm doing with um, reducing gun violence, that is what we have to stay focused on. Getting uh, in, in Baltimore, uh, our issue is getting illegal guns off the streets, period, and making sure that we are uh, locking up those who mean to terrorize our community. I was extremely excited to hear the news that um, the uh, you know public enemy number one has been captured this morning down in uh, Alabama and you know now we're looking to put a new number one on the list and, and go after that person uh, because we uh, intend uh, to be vigilant. We are not conceding um, this year to violence. We will be uh, vigilant. We'll continue to fight until all our neighborhoods are safe. Um, Mayor, this morning um, in the debate over the TIF, uh, you know, it was, it, it's been sold as a jobs creator and the BBC said to uh, control the practice, they don't know how many new jobs how many of these sold as jobs creator when there's really no definitive figures on how many new jobs are going to be created? 
Well, I, I, I think you're oversimplifying the sales pitch, which is it's not only a jobs creator. I mean, you can't dispute the construction jobs. So let's just, I mean, that, that alone is 7,000 construction jobs. So take that off the table. Um, it's not uh, simply being sold as a job creator. It's a city builder. This is a once in a lifetime, once in a, a generation uh, opportunity to build on a, on a long-standing vacant property uh, that has had a, where we are, uh, have an opportunity to go from $250,000 in annual property tax to over $20 million annually in property tax. So to me, to talk about it, you know, and to say, oh, wait, we can't give you the exact number on jobs, so we, sh we shouldn't do it. Um, when we're talking about creating significant uh, amount of new tax revenue, you know, this is public parks, public infrastructure, uh, significant tax revenue that benefits the entire city, period. Mayor, Councilman Stokes holds a lot of cards right now. He has the bill in his committee, all three bills in his committee. He gets to set when the, not only the hearing date, but when the voting date in the committee will be and therefore go to the full council. Um, at any point, if this begins to stall too long, will you call on the council president to, uh, to draft it up? I think the council, the, the, the chairman only has as, has as much power as has as many uh, cards as the president gives him. And the president supports this uh, project, and uh, I'm sure that he'll show that support. Guys, the mayor's on the mic stand for days. Just have a time for one more. Mayor, there were a lot of tough questions asked this morning by the comptroller. Mm -hmm. um, have you yourself looked at uh, these issues under a microscope? Uh, there, there seems to be a lot of debate going on in the city about this project. It is, uh, it appears to be risky based on some of the assessments. What have you done to um, analyze? I've looked at it. I've discussed it with my staff after they've analyzed it. I, we've gone back and back and back to make sure that we're getting uh, the best uh, for the citizens of Baltimore. I'm very, uh, very concerned, as, as was shown by the responses given uh, by BDC, that the concerns that the concerns of the comptroller be ad addressed. That being said, we're not always going to agree uh, on uh, every project. She has her responsibility as comptroller to ask the questions. Uh, we've a answered those questions, and uh, I feel compelled uh, to do what I believe is in the best interest of the city, which is to move forward with the project. Are other neighborhoods um, going to suffer because there's so much money and so much attention on this one parcel? I, I think uh, I'm not 100 percent sure what you're getting uh, what you're getting at as far as suffering. When we go from 250 million, 250 thousand dollars. Uh, of annual tax uh, benefit to over $20 million annual, that's an ability for not just that area to benefit, but the entire city to benefit. But that's so far down the road. Right. I mean, that's 20, 30 years down the road. And most of the taxes go to pay off the tip anyway, right? So it's not really flowing to the city. No. For a while. It's going to be a while before that money flows to the city. Tax mayor, the mayor really has to go. I could, they can answer the tax question. Yeah. Okay. The question is on the parks issue. A lot of money from the tip going in to pay for parks, for example, mm -hmm. and a lot of city parks right now are in disrepair. Uh, they are neglected because of budgetary concerns. Um, I know that in the case of Creston Garden, uh, the, the business community has had to take over that garden because it was it had fallen into terrible shape, and so the private sector has taken over that. So now we're spending all this money to build new parks when we really haven't taken care of the parks that we have. You cited uh, one example uh, where a park was in disrepair, and I'm not going to dispute that. Uh, but while we're trying to maintain, we also have to plan to grow. Uh, by your uh, by your assumption, then we would never do anything new, uh, because there was all there's always something to fix. You have to do both. We have to work to maintain, and we have to plan for growth. That's the job of an executive. Um, I'm not going to be uh, stuck in inertia because you know everything else that we're doing isn't perfect. Yes, we have uh, challenges in our parks, but we have to have an eye on growing, just like uh, we did when we opened the uh, reopened the Rita M. Church uh, new recreation center in Clifton Park yesterday. We still have challenges in some of our uh, in our other recreation centers, so we don't open a new uh, recreation center. We don't invest. I don't think that. Uh, would make a good executive to have to have that type of frame of reference uh, for making decisions on moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I had a question. This might be a clarification issue, but the in, in some of the BBC's documents, it 
says that the uh, property value of the finished Harbor Point project will be 1.8 billion, and then sometimes it says 1 billion. Well, can you explain the difference? Is, is that is that over time, or is that a clerical error? Or what, what's no, that? it's over time. So okay. at, the, at the end of the 30-year bond period, the project, the value of that property will be 1.8 billion. So after 30 years. Right. And then what is the 1 billion number? Is that after 20 years know. or what is that? Okay. I don't know. I don't know where you're getting that from. Okay. The, the, the value of the construction, both the private and the public, is just over a billion dollars. Okay. So that might be what you're Might be getting right. confused. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, Councilman Stoke says that he feels like he doesn't have enough information. He wants more information from the developer. He likened it to a bank loan where you know the developer should turn over more detailed finance. He doesn't feel like there's enough uh, details on the construction costs. How do you respond? I think that the level of information that's been shared has been unprecedented. We have gone above and beyond to connect with the councilman, his staff, and others to make sure that the information that they've requested, the information that they said they need is available to them. As recently as, as this morning, uh, Daryl double-checked with the councilman staff to make sure that they had what they needed. In terms of um, the bank loan or the end financing for the project, the, the TIF or the investment that the developer is seeking from the city is integral to that. And until um, lenders know with more certainty whether or not it's something that the city will support, it is difficult to get that level of financing certainty. And there's sort of a similar argument with the hotel. You know, it has to be, it can't be built by private, it needs public support, or in this case it was public. And, and that's not doing too well. So mm -hmm. um, are you taking a risk here that, you know, maybe are we, are, is this stage of in a way? I don't think this is the same as the hotel. The hotel was one where the city stepped in to actually build and operate it, and they contracted with someone to do the operation of it. This isn't it. This is a private investment of over a billion dollars where folks are looking for the city to invest or put in or partner for roughly 10% of the development costs. Those costs are associated with infrastructure, the type of infrastructures that, that cities typically invest in, roads, bridge, park. This morning, or yesterday, the Downtown Partnership sent a letter to the City Council endorsing the Harbor Point deal. Do you think that that will allay some of the critics who say that it's just pulling jobs from, um, you know, western parts of Baltimore over to the eastern side? I mean, we're exceedingly positive about the growth trajectory that this city is seeing. And we're very happy that uh, Kirby Fowler and the team at the Downtown par Partnership actually share and believe in the growth of the city. So having the options of the traditional downtown augmented by some options in the Harbor East area really ensures that we're, that we're going to be able to attract and keep the most competitive employers here in the city. Brenda, what did you promise Kirby uh, to get that letter? What, what kind of exchange was done? Kirby in the past has not supported the Harbor Point side. Hmm. Meeting, uh, Friday, we we certainly did present. I've hours. certainly had conversations. They certainly discussed after Daryl and I left the room. But you know, candidly, information is our friend, and I think the more that we're able to converse with people, talk about the project, talk about the benefits, talk about the fact that we're talking about an expanding pie or a growth trajectory as opposed to pitting one neighborhood against the other or one interest against the other. When people see that we're talking about augmenting the city and the benefits. They typically say it's a good thing. People are interested in growing the city. But geographically, the center city, the core of the city, is hurting with vacancies and uh, businesses wanting to move to the waterfront. What did you say to the uh, Downtown Partnership Board about their area that they really concentrate on to get their approval of the waterfront? You know, we certainly, excuse me, did do the presentation uh, to the board, but we had also met with a number of board members, certainly. I think the level of outreach that Daryl and the team and others have done to make sure that those who are interested in truly learning about the project, its benefits, asking questions, we've made ourselves available to those individuals to make sure people have the information that they need. The brokerage community is also one that we reached out to extensively, and candidly, that I sought the counsel of as well, just to better understand what the market is, what's going on the mar with the market, and where the opportunities are. There was a program that was recently introduced that speaks to some of the conversion in the traditional downtown area. 
that's important because what we really do want to make sure is that we have a vibrant 24 7 environment for downtown that we have not only the business workers or the people who are going to come and work to populate it the shoppers who come and also restaurants we need to make sure that there's a 24 7 environment and we're really maximizing the potential of downtown so certainly look forward to continuing the partnership with Kirby and his team and growing the city Um, currently, the, the city's uh, tax supported debt uh, percentage as relationship to assessed value is about 2.4% currently. Um, and uh, you have to remember that this project is going to be phased in right. over that 12 year period. The first impact is going to be about $41 million, is what we're estimating. And a $41 million effect on that ratio is, is, is not significant. What's the percentage? Do you know what the percentage is? Maybe 10. Point, point one. But what about the overall uh, picture? I know it's going to be phased yeah. in over 12 right. years, but what does it bring the 2.4% up to? Well, what we'd have to do is, is not only would we have to uh, project out the debt over the 12 year period, but also the increase in assessed value. Um, so I think what we're going to do is take a look at this in stages and um, make sure that we manage it properly and we'll be well within our criteria. And what about um, with that approaching the 4% ceiling? Is, mm -hmm. um, other projects like Westport, which is still hanging out there, right. already approved to tip district. Does that is that project in jeopardy now because no. of uh, so much you know? No, um, no, 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 no. That that project was also a phased project as well, um, with smaller amounts uh, building up to the full uh, authorization, but. The other option that we do have is we can use other issuers. Uh, Medco was, was an option that we were going to use for Westport that would remove that debt from our books and have it on, on their books. So there's, there's other ways of getting this done without the city being the issuer, and we're certainly going to look at that in relationship to our ratio and make that decision uh, when it occurs. After the council approves this, it will go back to the Board of Finance again to then uh, issue the bonds, correct? No, that's correct. Yeah, the, the, uh, once the city council approves it, uh, part of that approval allows the Board of Finance to determine the, the final terms and conditions of the bonds. And will that meeting be open to the public or will that be closed also? Uh, we'll have to look at that at the time. As you know, the state law allows uh, the sale of securities to be a, a closed meeting, and there's reasons for that we can talk about later, but um, we'll make that decision at the time. And then uh, I'd like to request the documents that you were going to provide to the comptroller, which is um, the new uh, jobs total. Is that involved in this, in this tip? No. But there's some fees for them in there. What's that important? Yeah, I can address that. Um, at the beginning of the process, we, we were contemplating perhaps using Medco. Um, okay. But we, we since decided not to do that. And I think our latest projections have those out. Okay. Latest. 